Hi, everybody. My name is Juan Jose de la Torre, very classic, long Spanish name. You can call me JJ, and you can find me on my Twitter over there. Uh, today, we're going to take the discussion on transformation to a slightly different angle. That is about design. Yes, design. And how design can help us to actually build transformation, but most important, to transform your organization. So design has always been part of our life. We know design, we use it, and we consume it on a daily life. Every time we're interacting with a product, we're interacting with, with design. Every time that we're consuming a service, someone has created the service and basically conceived it in a way that we can actually embed it as part of our life. However, when it comes to technology, for some reason, we forgot about design. We forgot about how design was important and how design needed to be an integral part of a product creation or a service development. And design is relevant. And why design today is more relevant than ever? Today, every time that you have a digital asset, the first impression really matters. Every time that you put something out there, every time that you create a product that is digital, the expectations of your customers, the expectations of your clients are evolving. And those expectations never stop. To give you an example of one of our clients, we worked with Bing to actually define you know, how their new design is going to be. And by changing you know, to the right color of blue, they were able to increase their revenues in around 80 minutes. We're saying you know, right color of blue. This is slightly difference between you know, a color that makes a fundamental business impact. And we see that the design really, at the end, determines who is going to be winning, who is going to be losing, who is going to have a product and a service that actually uptake and conquer the world or your market, and who is going to be out of business. We see it with Vine and Instagram, and we see it in the many disruptors that today are basically interacting in our world. Design is something that is beyond how things look. Design is not only about the aesthetics of the product. It's about the interaction that we're trying to build with that product. And I would like to stop here a little bit and say it again. It's about the interaction. Everyone can create beautiful design, but the important thing is like we create designs that drives behavior, designs that help you as an organization to conquer the goals and the objectives that you have. So, of course, you know, this is beautiful, it's nice, you know, it looks pretty cool, but completely useless. Design needs to fulfill a need, and that need needs to be compared in a way that can be consumed. Also, we need to think on the usage and the end user of that design. An example here from Haynes, one is extremely focused on the brand, and the other one is focused on the customer. You know, now instead of having to flip the bottle, tap it on the back, and you know, pray that you're going to get some ketchup, you just squeeze it. That design, the second one, is completely focused on the end user. Design is also an holistic component, and this is one of the issues that we find with many of our clients. They go and create an amazing and very beautiful interface that then fails to actually integrate with the back end or fails to integrate with the operations. You know, as the previous speaker was saying, it's, it's a full end-to-end -end view that you need to have. You cannot just design one part of the interaction. You need to fill and you need to be focused on the entire interaction. And here comes a new concept that we see now. Design for experience. We're not designing to consume a product or a service anymore. We are designing an experience. You know, we create something that has been there for many times, many years sometimes, and we transform it completely into a new experience. And this has been pushed by the disruptors. You know, these companies that started with zero value as a startup of two or three people in a garage Without the legacy that you know, bigger corporations or mid corporations have, focus exclusively on creating the best product and best services that they can put in the market. That focus excels when it comes to design. And that focus allows them to actually disrupt 
in multiple ways the market. When we see that, our expectations as a user start evolving. And as those expectations evolve, our interaction with those players changes. So we start demanding much more things. We start demanding one-to-one -one engagement that then can go in two ways. We demand trans and transparency. Now with a single click, I can compare your prices anyone in the world. You know, some of you probably know that Amazon started to open physical stores, something that a few years ago they said that they will never do. One of the reasons is like people were taking the Amazon app, going to a physical store where you can have a real human interaction and using one of the features of the app that was to scan a barcode to compare the price. So I would go to a local retailer, take out my, my iPhone or my smartphone, open the Amazon app, and check the price. If the price was too close, then I would buy it immediately. So I would have that instant gratification of getting the, the good and taking it with me. If the price was a little bit different, but the service that I was offering was good, I would still buy it. If the service was bad and the price was high, I would buy it on Amazon at that point, and I would go home and wait for it. To avoid this, you know, Amazon is stepping you know, into you know, reducing the time of delivery, but at the same time, open physical store. It's about an omni-channel engagement. When I communicate with your brand, when I communicate with your you know, services and product, I want you to listen to me and be able to talk to me in any mean I am. And this is another challenge that we face with many of our clients. You know, the inconsistency on the different customer experience channels. You go to Twitter, and the response time that a user expected is seven minutes. And we still we have companies that have, you know, in their Twitter, the description of their, their users said, open nine to five. Just doesn't apply. But also, you know, we value the delivery. You know, we start putting more focus on that interaction and that product to be customized and created exclusively for me. And as a user, I now have the opportunity to give real-time customer feedback. And I'm happy that, you know, the previous speaker showed an example on coffee, because we're going to see how all these things get actually integrated. So when we put these things together, we start designing not products, not services, but experiences. And we built experiences that are designed to drive behavior. That behavior, that is what we expect to get from your clients or your customers. And as this quote is saying, the bar never stops. Keep racing and racing and racing. Every time I interact with the digital product, every time that I have and I download a new app and I like it, my expectations go up and go up and go up. And what we see today is a big gap between those services that are from the, what we can call the disruptors, the Facebooks, the Ubers, the Airbnbs, and our traditional companies, the banks, telcos, insurance, government, you name it. Both have the same exposure to technology. Both have the ability to create the same type of services. But one is exceeding the other one when it comes to the focus on the entire experience. And of course, there are lasting memories. You know, of course, there are, you know, shifting orientations. You know, Everyone is aware of this, but the question is like, what we can do about it? And what is the first step? And designing for experience, start by design. You know, transformation, and I think that all the speakers today will agree, is not about putting a new technology system or a new IT system. Yes, people are extremely important. I'm probably one of the key drivers. But to create, transform, you need to focus on experience. Experience wins. Experience is all. This example becomes 
a trending hashtag in Twitter, and it costed this company more than $30 million in two days. And the cost of actually publication and producing that experience was less than a cent of a dollar. If you calculate the amount of you know, ketchup and mustard that they spread on the, on, on the table and, and the connectivity. On the other side, this company was able to rally and become a trending hashtag on creating an impromptu concert in a venue just by actually associating with their users. What we're trying to do at the end is to transform this. That is where we have been focusing so many years. It's a product. It's solid. You can see it. You can touch it. You can evaluate it. And when I said evaluate it, we evaluate these products with ROI. We evaluate these products with the traditional financial metrics. But we need to transform this into this. That is experience. We're no longer talking about the bicycle. We're no longer talking about the product and how many gears it has, how many you know, different components that product has been created with. We're talking about the experience that this product or service is going to entitle to enjoy. To do this, there are three pillars that are extremely important. First, compelling value proposition. Second one, enabling technologies. And third, you know, support the ecosystem. When you combine the three things and you're designing for experience, you can start creating, you know, great experiences. And the example of Starbucks is something that is, is one of our worldwide clients where we have taken the experience to the next level. We have actually enable cognitive computing to interact with you and predict what is going to be your consumption pattern and according to that, deliver a new experience to you. Burberry has done something very similar. You know, brought artisans into the store to build experience. It's no longer about you know, going and simple shopping. It's about experiencing the store. And Burberry, besides the look, is one of the outlets that have the most advanced technology use of all of them. Amazon, we discussed it already. No lines, no checkout. You just get in, take the product, and leave. And everything will be customized to you. And success comes by user experience. Comes what we, what we call a UX-led design. US-led digital execution where we start focusing on what are the things that you need to create and then how we actually go back and integrate those things with your current organization. We conceive the experience, and from conceiving the experience, we retrofit in a way that can be integrated with your current business. And as you can see in these disruptors, all of them have been able to create a personalized experience that is different with their customers. When we talk about transformation, we talk about you know, an evolution. And I put a transformer because like, it's, it's going from one component to another one. And you can go back and forth on those things. This is one of the key steps that we need to be able to fulfill now. But we're going to go a little bit further now. We're going to talk about reinvention and what that is mean and how we start this journey. How, once we have identified that design is important and is a key driver of transformation, where do we start? We start with what we call a digital studio. A digital studio, it's a new driver of transformation that we place inside organizations. It's a new way of actually working and operating is a new way of actually creating insights based on design thinking, based on agile, bringing new capabilities to an organization to create beautiful designs that drive behavior. And this is ultimately what we're trying to do. We're trying to build things that not only from a cosmetic and aesthetics component are appealing, 
but also will drive the business objectives that you want to create. This is something that it also changed our organization. We go from working on a linear manner, you know, step by step, in cascade, to actually working on agile, working on cross-functional. We remove the silos of the organization. We don't longer have marketing defining a product, IT then going and building it and give it back to marketing, and then we continue with this cycle. Now we have cross-functional teams dedicated to a single experience. And these teams are even collocated. These that look simple have a fundamental shift in how organizations work. We start putting in the same room, working together, hand by hand, people from marketing, people from business, people from strategy, people from IT, from technology, developers and designers, there's a new way of interacting. And this is how the disruptors are working today. If you see all these startups, and even the big ones that are no longer startups, they don't have IT in one floor, marketing in another one, business in a separate one. They're working together. And they're integrated. And that integration actually is one of the key components. You know, spaces are very important. We talk people, places, and practices makes the magic. Because when we have a new working environment, people start with a fresh mind. People start with a new way of doing. And again, these new environments are created by design, are built based on the business objectives that we want to achieve as an organization. So we take the same concept that we're taking to our clients, design that drives behavior internally in our organization. We build places that actually will drive behavior, behavior in this case of our employees. A new ways of working, as I said. We talk about releases. We talk about backlogs. We talk about quicks, you know. And we're no longer engaged in 12, 18, 24 month projects. Instead of that, we're talking about what is the next improvement that we want to be doing? What is the next thing that we want to put in the market? And how soon we can get there? We also learn to accept imperfection. And I think this is one of the fundamental changes that a big organization or a mid organization needs to make. You see all the disruptors, and even you know, Facebook, Google, or Apple, they launch their products and their services, most of the time not being ready 100%, but achieving a due date. They launch it, and then they improve it. And in the case of the startups or the, the, the nascent companies, what they do is they launch MVPs, minimum viable propositions, and then they learn from the users. They learn from the consumption of those and evolve. And this is, again, another fundamental change. When we design the experience, one of the fundamental components is like we need to be able to see how the experience is consumed by our clients or customers and then retrofit and modify the experience. We don't take one month to write the specifications, that then we take three months to you know, convert into an RFP, that then we go and take six months or, or nine months to actually develop. What we need to do is actually shorten that time and focus on what is the experience that we want to make it and how to make it you know, in terms of small incremental steps. And we use, in our case, IBM design thinking with some principles. The loop is extremely important because it reflects the infinite iteration that you need to do. There's no end. There's no product end day. There's no a day that you can go and say, we're finished. No. This is a permanent reinvention. As soon as you finish one release, you're thinking the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And you're thinking how to improve it. And as I said before, that improvement comes from the consumption that your clients and users are giving to you. Something very interesting also is like 
we see in the organizations new people that these organizations were not used to. Suddenly, big corporations start having coders, designers, strategists, data scientists, and all these people, creatives also, that used to be working in isolated organizations, from the consultancy to the creative agencies, now come together under a single roof. To do what? To reinvent. And reinvention is about how we're going to evolve, not thinking on transforming from A to B, but really going introspectively and thinking about reinventing your business. That reinvention that put the experience at the center and focus on three key areas that you need to uh, basically exceed. A new focus, a new expertise, and new ways of work. When you question even your business model, even that business model that is generating the core of your revenues, you question it and you reinvent it. We see, as the example before, banks that started to open APIs and start actually allowing other people to access. Telcos working with the ecosystem to actually transform and create new experiences. Governments, like the government in Dubai, working in blockchain with IBM in this case, for instance, to actually expand and create a full ecosystem that challenged the norm on how you're operating. And from there, what we see is like we start evolving the concept of digital and experience and how we're creating these design-driven moments into that become a digital DNA for an organization. So how we do it? You know, we combine four practices that usually has been scattered. From one side, consulting, execution, creative, and integration into a one single umbrella to create experiences like the Starbucks, where we are able to have what we call a model builder. We combine CRM data, what has been your latest actions with, with your brand, what was your latest purchase, what was your latest complaint, with the weather, with your social feed, with anything that can help us to actually understand where are you in this particular moment, to then basically create a predictive model. Predictive model that if today I'm in New York and I always pass outside one of the Starbucks in the Fifth Avenue, and it's 6.55 and I'm walking by, and my app will open and say, morning, JJ, we see that today is a very cold day. What about we prepare your espresso and we have it ready to go in five minutes? Click yes to confirm. We say yes. All the backend systems start interacting. All the comp components come together. The barista gets a note that he needs to prepare espresso for me. I walk in, I take the espresso, and I leave. Contactless payment, everything has been customized, and we have created an experience. An experience that goes beyond coffee, an experience that goes beyond just enjoying a simple product and service. We're creating an experience today with, with companies that vary around, and what they all have in common is their focus on relentless innovation and identifying design as a source of reinventing the experience that they are creating with the customers. Thank you very much.